Can you install Google Apps on a Linux phone? The short answer is yes, but. Now, if you're looking to install Google Apps on a device that is not a standard stock Android device, you may be familiar with the method with Micro G. Now, if you've never heard of Micro G before, it might sound a bit scary, but in fact, it's quite easy to use. If you're comfortable using alternative app stores such as F-Droid or even Aurora Store, you'll notice that you can install certain apps, but other apps may not work and you'll get a notification saying that you need Google services in order to use that specific app. This means that you'll need Micro G. Now, the easiest way to install Micro G is directly through F-Droid. So if you don't have F-Droid, I highly recommend going to their website, downloading the APK, and installing it on your device. Now, the device I'm using today is the Yola C2 Community Phone, which is using Sailfish OS, a Linux-based operating system. You can still use Micro G with other custom ROMs, such as Graphene, Lineage, and the list goes on and on. Micro G enables you to connect with your Google account or not and be able to spoof those certificates into tricking the apps that you have indeed a Google Android device. Now, I'm going to say this works with most apps, but there are some key exceptions. For example, you can install Google apps such as Maps, Android Auto, I use YouTube as a YouTuber, and even YouTube Studio, which enables me to connect via my YouTube account and manage my channel. I haven't seen any major issues with the Google apps themselves. There is certain lag, especially for Maps, but it more or less works like it would on any other device, just a little bit slower. Now, I've had a lot of questions for specific apps in my last video covering the Yola C2 community phone, and a lot of people asked about Uber, yes, it works, and banking applications. Now, banking applications may vary upon where you live and your bank's privacy credentials. I have multiple banking apps. I have more mainstream ones, such as American Express or even Revolut, and those require Google Play services, and I was able to install and use them using Micro G without any issue. Now, I did run into some issues regarding government apps. This will again depend on the country where you live and the specific app requirements. Some of my apps work perfectly fine. I live in France. Certain government apps work okay, like France Travail, but some of them do not, such as the healthcare system, Amelie, that app will not connect and will not work at all. So this, again, is a bit of a trial and error situation. Now, some of you may be asking, can I use this for tap to pay? No, this particular device doesn't have NFC, but if you're using a device that has Linux that has an NFC capable device, potentially it could work for some certain tap to pay options. I tried this, for example, for my local transport app. It wasn't working. It told me right away my device is not compatible because this device in particular doesn't have NFC. I am able to use certain functionalities in the app, just not the option to recharge my transport pass, for example. Now, all in all, adding Micro G to your device gives you a lot more functionality if you want to be able to use your device fully. Again, I'm going to say certain apps may not work, but the vast majority of apps will work fine and it makes the device a heck of a lot more usable, especially for those of you who have non-negotiable apps that you need to use in your day-to-day -day life. Now, going into the aspects of this particular phone, the Yola C2 community phone, you will notice that you have some additional steps you need to go through with installing Micro G. Micro G can be difficult to set up on a lot of devices, but this device has a few extra steps that I highly recommend checking out the article on their website. And I have a few more tips <laughs> as well to add to that article itself. I went through the article and did all of the items it expected for me to do. And you'll notice within Micro G, you have a self-check page that's really helpful. You can select certain options, give permissions. But I noticed that some of those permissions weren't appearing after I made the changes. So I highly recommend restarting your device in order to see those permissions being granted within the self-check of the app itself. 
There are a couple items on my self-checklist that never were validated. One of them was for an alternative account that I had installed or a user account on my device that no longer exists. So I wasn't worried about it not being activated and Micro G worked just fine without that particular self-check item activated. Now, all in all, I'm having no issues with Micro G. I'm able to, again, control it through F-Droid if I need to update the apps or anything that needs to be modified. Again, I haven't had any issues. So I've been using it for about a week like this. I've added every app I can possibly think of and test. And again, I've only had issues with certain government apps and apps that require NFC that aren't working the way they would on another device. I hope this video is helpful and giving you more reassurance. If you're thinking about going down the route of using a Linux operating system such as Sailfish OS, that it is possible to use most apps with Micro G spoofing the Google services. I'd like to give a huge shout out and thank you to my members and thank all of you for watching and see you soon.